संकल्प प्रभवान कामह त्यक्वा सर्वान अशेषतः मनसै वेंद्रिय ग्रामम विनियम्य समंततः शनै शनै उपरमे बुद्ध्या धृति गृहीतया आत्मसंस्थं मनःकृत्वा न किंचिदपि चिन्तये we are discussing the most important topic of dhriti in the process of analyzing the actions that we do and helping us to do right actions krishna dives deep into various components that make up an action and then by dissecting an action into its components he categorizes each of the components jnana karta karma and then buddhi intelligence and finally he takes up dhriti determination <coughs> while jnana helps us to set the right goal to have the right vision to have an expansive perspective it is with buddhi we can make choices decisions the process of planning is done with the help of buddhi and after having made choices we need to have dhriti to persist in performing the actions after all a choice is made but the action has to be completed and this is exactly where we fail most often because we live in an age where we seem to be always very busy we all are very busy this is what we say but in reality we are not busy we are just distracted this is an age of distraction and when we say distraction there is no need for us to classify distraction into major distraction or minor distraction distraction is a distraction because all distractions impact us the same way we may console ourselves we may rationalize by saying it's only a few minutes that i got distracted it is only a few minutes that you know i was browsing it is only a few minutes that i was you know on facebook few minutes on twitter few minutes on instagram you know the few minutes few hours every day over several years become very very costly without us realizing the distraction in our lives not only delays our progress it destroys our progress without us realizing progress of all sorts not just spiritual progress any progress any meaningful progress in life is not only delayed but it is destroyed because what we call a minor distraction is so very dangerous because our mind is a product of habits and every act every diversion that the mind takes makes an impression in the mind and that impression impels us to repeat the diversion and every time we repeat the diversion the impression that is made in the mind gets strengthened and before we realize 
that diversion which started off in a very innocuous fashion becomes a habit that we cannot overcome. This is exactly what has happened to most of us in this so-called digital age. If we really analyze the way we conduct ourselves every day, the number of times we are drawn into checking our smartphones for a variety of reasons. It could be to check a WhatsApp message, it could be to browse through a web, it could be Facebook, it could be Twitter. Over a period of 24 hours, we may think we possibly spent a couple of hours being distracted. So two hours out of 24 is not really a big percentage, but we have to really look at it. It is not two out of 24. Now out of 24, we have to subtract eight hours for sleep, three to four hours for our three to four times of eating, five to six hours of the work that we do, another two, three hours of engagement with people, we subtract all of that and then take a percentage of these two hours or the remaining hours, then it is not small at all. We are possibly consuming 70 to 80 percent of valuable time. This mode of distract, we are in a perennial dis mode of distraction all the time. And that is the reason why especially in today's age, the topic of dhriti becomes so very critical for us. Now, when we talk about distraction, we, have, we, have, we can have this question. Do the senses lead the mind astray or does the mind lead the senses astray? The answer is both are possible. It depends on the source, the trigger for distraction. Where is it coming from? <coughs> Sometimes the trigger is out there, outside. The sense objects which can mislead the mind and lead it astray. But believe it or not, most often it is out here. Because even if we shut ourselves from the world, we can still stay distracted. That is why Krishna says Sankalpa Prabhavan Kaman talking about how to build focus, how to cultivate concentration. He says first and foremost is Tyaktva Sarvan He says Sankalpa Prabhavan Kaman This is way back in the sixth chapter Krishna talking about cultivating focus and concentration, he talks about how most of our triggers for distraction actually comes from our internal recollection of the things that have happened in the past, our vasanas, our likes and dislikes. That is why he says, Sankalpa Prabhavan Kama, longings that are induced by the imaginations of the mind. Most often our longings are induced by our own imaginations. And unless we abandon these imaginations of the mind, caused by our likes and dislikes, we will always stay in a mode of distraction all the time. Now, the moment we say abandoning our likes and dislikes, immediately the question would have, we will ask is, then what happens to our freedom? If we start abandoning our longings based on our likes, then is it not again going against the freedom that we all need to enjoy? So this is where our misunderstanding of what true freedom comes in. Freedom does not reside in our right to experience whatever we like. Freedom resides in liking right experiences. 
freedom does not reside in our right to do whatever we like. Freedom lies in liking the right things to do. No, this is very, very important. And that is why Krishna says, Shanair Shanair Uparime Buddhya Driti Grihitaya. Buddhya Driti Grihitaya. Shanair Shanair Uparime. Slowly and steady, step by step. Attain peace of mind, attain tranquility. Uparamed. Because the mind is always in a state of agitation. It's always agitated. It's only the degree of agitation that may differ. But it is always in a state of agitation because it is processing a number of thoughts, competing thoughts. And if we need to attain any degree of peace, any tranquility, it is very important that we do it step by step. Buddhya Dhriti Grihitaya. For the first time, Krishna way back in the 6th chapter brings in the concept of Dhriti and the importance of Dhriti. Buddhya, this is where we see how Buddhi and Dhriti have to work together. Buddhi, intelligence, needs to be held by Dhriti, Krishna says. It is not enough if the intelligence functions properly. It needs to be held by Dhriti. Atma samstaha mano dhritva. In order to focus on Atman, the reality, or for that matter on any goal, and get away from all kinds of thoughts that are running in, in the mind, one needs to exercise one's free will. And hold one's intelligence and it is only by holding one's intelligence with dhriti that one can attain peace attain tranquility while the mind always impels us towards short term fulfilling our short term wants mind is always designed to go after immediate gratification. This is the way mind works. It is only intelligence that inspires us to go towards long term good. Now, the mind by design gets attracted, gets influenced to whatever comes within its attention, whether it is coming from through perception of the outside world or coming through our own internal recollection. It is only with intelligence that we can evaluate and determine what really matters to us. And accordingly, when we evaluate what really matters and then get the mind to focus on that. But the problem here is, mind is always faster than the intelligence. Mind functions like a wind very, very fast all the time. Before the intelligence can evaluate, the mind already re reacts. And therefore, determination, dhriti, is all about making intelligence faster than the mind. If the intelligence is not made faster than the mind, we will always be reacting. We cannot respond. And the mind gets carried away by whatever comes into it, you know, into its attention. To get the mind to focus on what really matters based on the analysis done by the intelligence, based on what is right and wrong, that requires the analysis of right and wrong to function faster than the mind, the intelligence need. This is where Dhriti comes in. And it is with Dhriti that we can get the hierarchy right. The hierarchy, the internal hierarchy has to be in the right order. The senses, the manas, and on top of manas is buddhi. Buddhi has to be the boss. But unfortunately, for us, it, the hierarchy is completely reversed. The senses are the boss, bosses. Too many bosses. And 
and then the senses take over and run the mind and then buddhi doesn't function at all so it requires dhriti to get this hierarchy right and make buddhi run faster than the manas so that we can evaluate whatever is presented to us internally or externally and then get the mind to focus now why can't we really focus if we ask this question to ourselves because there are three factors that somehow ensure that we are always distracted we are we can that we always struggle to focus one is that one is the random growth in the number of distractions around us the number of distractions are randomly growing not in our control the second is the rapid increase in the intensity of competition between the distractions and the third is the exponential decrease in our attention span all three contribute to us our inability to not focus the number of distractions around us in the world is growing by the day it is not in our control unfortunately in this digital age you know it's very very difficult to get away from this we are presented with number of and the, the, the growth in the number of distractions the sources of distraction is only growing presenting more challenges to us worse than the number of distractions is the competition you know because all the marketers of the world want to get our attention and we see that somehow or the other they try to get into our system and try to keep us distracted all the time but the worst part is the exponentially decreasing attention span that all of us seem to have now this is the biggest challenge now somebody said your greatest competitor is your distraction we don't need anyone else to compete we are competing with our own distraction because as we see as society see you know is technologically progressing our ability our attention span is exactly in the opposite direction decreasing tech progress in technology seems to have a reverse inverse correlation with our attention spans and i think all of us in the last 15 20 25 years we have all experienced this and with the growing number of desires in our mind if the mind is crowded with desires and if the mind is clouded with fear there is no way the mind can be brought to focus and therefore what happens is even when we resolve to do an action even when we resolve to do an action make a choice even a conscious choice most of the time we don't make conscious choices but even if you make a conscious choice and resolve to do an action we fail to persevere because in the process of doing any action we are always rushing towards pleasure or running away from pain this is what constantly have and we miss out on focusing on the purpose of the action let me give an analogy here we have to go to a very very important meeting and we know that is the meeting is so very important that we cannot miss it and we are driving down towards that meeting and then we are stuck in traffic crazy traffic the road quality is bad and we are suffering in the traffic but would we turn away and go back we wouldn't we would persist in spite of the traffic in spite of the bad roads in spite of all the challenges we would persist and continue to drive to reach the destination why because we recognize the significance of the purpose of the travel similarly when we are driving down to this all important meeting and all of a sudden we see our favorite movie a free ticket being given to us inviting us to come inside 
the cinema hall. If we recognize the importance of the meeting that we have to attend, we wouldn't get distracted with this pleasure that is inviting us. We would continue. Same is the case in our life journey. As we journey through this life, we are presented with pains and pleasures, the dualities of life. Now, if we are not clear about the purpose of life, then we are bound to be distracted by the dualities. The small pleasure here, the big pain there, the bigger pleasure here, the dualities of life promises exceeding, exceedingly extravagant pleasures. Sometimes they threaten catastrophic pains and then we succumb only to find out later that the pain and pleasure that was promised or threatened after all in the larger scheme of things really did not matter. Just reflect going back 10 years back. Reflect on some of the incidents the so-called extraordinary pleasure or so-called catastrophic pains that we all underwent after 10 years they are they don't seem to any more matter to us at all because why in life's journey pain and pleasure will repeatedly keep coming and if we do not recognize the purpose of life, if we do not have a higher purpose in life, we will only stay distracted all the time. Rushing towards pleasure, running away from pain. And only when there is a higher purpose in life, then our actions become purpose driven, driven by that very purpose. And that is when we stay focused on that very purpose. And therefore, Krishna, highlighting the importance of dhriti, starts discussing the nature of sattvika dhriti. Dhritya yaya dharayate manak pranendriya kriya yogena abhyabhicharinya dhriti sa patta sattviki, he says. He said, hey, Arjuna, Dhritya yaya dharayate manaha pranendriya kriyaha. That determination, Dhriti, which is determination, focus, concentration, perseverance, fortitude, that is sattvika in nature when it properly regulates our mind, prana, and our indriyas. He says, Unless the mind, prana and indriyas are not regulated, not managed properly, then we stay distracted all the time. So therefore, with only with dhriti, we can manage the functions of the mind. We can manage the functions of the prana. We can manage the functions of the indriyas and ensure that we stay on course. We stay focused on the purpose of every action that we have chosen to undertake. Now, how to regulate manaha, prana and indriyas? Krishna, earlier in the fourth chapter, talks about how we can purify our actions. Every action can be purified only when it is performed as a yajna. And in the process of explaining Karma Yoga, Krishna talks about the different kinds of yajnas that one needs to perform. Yajna is nothing but purification of action. And here, Dhriti, Krishna is talking about, is all about regulating Manaha, Prana and Indriya, which means performing every action with respect to the mind, which means every mental action, contemplation, the functions of the prana, and the actions of the senses, which is perception, 
all have to be regulated only if they are performed as an yajna. And what is yajna? Yajna is nothing but a process where there are oblations that are offered into fire and then there is a reward that comes up. This is the concept of yajna. Now, Krishna talks about yajna to purify the process of contemplation of the mind and perception using our senses. Shotradin indriyananye samyamag mishu juhvati. Shabdadin vishayananye indriyag mishu juhvati. He talks about two techniques. Two techniques of purifying our contemplation, purifying our perception. This is where Dhriti enables this purification. What is purification of perception? Shabdadin vishayananye indriyag mishu juhvati. Now here we have to visualize the yajna that Krishna is talking about. Here there is a fire element and there are inputs, there are offerings made into the fire. Shabdhadin Vishayananya. These are Shabdhadin Vishayananya. Shabdas Parisha Rupa Rasaganda. The objects of the senses, he says, have to become offerings, oblations into the fire of the Indriyas. What does Krishna mean by that? Krishna means by that the senses have to become filters. This is what is called Indriya Nigraha. Which means before the stimuli from the outside world can reach the mind, we need to purify the senses so that the senses can become gatekeepers. Anything in this world can contaminate my mind. Anything in this world, the moment it enters my mind, will contaminate me whether I like it or not. Now, how do I prevent my mind being contaminated? I need some gatekeepers. I need to fence myself. So here, one way is to use dhriti with determination, make the sense organs as filters, which means I decide to turn away from what I do not want to enter my mind. I, I use my Dhriti to not look at unwanted things. I use my Dhriti to not receive unwanted sounds. I use my Dhriti not to taste unwanted things. My senses become gatekeepers. I am fencing myself so that the problem comes only when the stimuli goes inside the mind. So I stop right at the first level. I build a, car, you know, a security corridor around me. And using my Dhriti, I ensure that Stimuli does not get inside. This is level one. This is Indriya Nigraha. This is purifying my perception. Using Dhriti, I manage the action of perceiving the external world. But then I can try as much as I can, but it is impossible to avoid external stimuli going inside my mind. So I need now a second level of security. You know, VIPs have multiple layers of security. There is second layer and there is first layer and so on. So therefore, the second layer of security. Shotradin indriyananye samyamagmishu juhvati. He says, this yajna is where my dhriti, my will becomes the fire. And into this fire, I offer my sense organs. What is the reward for that? Mind mastery which is Mano Nigraha. The first is Indriya Nigraha where my sense organs become filters. They filter what can go inside, what cannot go inside. At the second level, the second quarter of security is Mano Nigraha. Now, whatever comes into my mind is going to create havoc. Now, how do I now manage the stimuli that have already come inside my mind? This is where I offer all the sense organs as oblations into the fire of dhriti, fire of free will, where anything that reaches inside my mind, only if I, if my mind pays attention to it, it becomes, it becomes critical. Just like how all ripples, all waves begin as <coughs> small ripples, only with the aid of the wind, a small ripple becomes a wave. 
and with more wind the small wave becomes a mighty wave and with much more wind the mighty wave becomes a tsunami now the wind here is the attention that the mind can give so any thought that is triggered because of a stimuli that comes into my mind if i continue to give attention to that thought that thought sooner or later is going to become a tsunami that's going to consume me but the moment i do not pay attention to the thought the thought will die its natural death so stimuli that come in need not necessarily agitate me as long as with driti i manage to bring my attention or take my attention away from unwanted thoughts this is where driti along with intelligence has to decide what thought is healthy what thought is unhealthy to me and the moment i identify an unhealthy thought unhealthy thoughts do arise in our minds whether we like it or not but it is up to us whether to fan the unhealthy thought provide it attention and let it grow or completely kill it सर्वाणींद्रियकर्माणि प्राणकर्माणि चापरे आत्मसंयम्य योगाग्नो जुह्वति ज्ञानदीपिते इसे नाउ ऑल द एक्शंस दैट वी डू विद 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 आवर सेंस ऑर्गन्स विद आवर ज्ञानेंद्रियास विद आवर कर्मेंद्रियास विद आवर प्राणा ऑल ऑफ दिस इज नथिंग बट प्रोडक्शन ऑफ प्लेजर एंड पेन नाउ इफ आई ऑफर ऑल ऑफ दिस इनटू एज ऑफरिंग्स टू अ फायर ऑफ a controlled mind ignited illumina illumined by knowledge then the reward of this yajna is actions that are purified without any attachment so how do you purify with driti you can purify every action essentially offering an action in the fire of knowledge when an action which is impure is offered in the fire of knowledge then that impure action becomes a pure action it becomes a, a sakama karma becomes a nishkama karma so krishna therefore says, manaha pranendriya kriya so when the driti is satvika in nature it helps us to regulate manage all the actions of our mind our prana our indriyas and ensure that the hierarchy is always right the buddhi does its role properly manas does it but does its role as per the instructions of the mind and the senses do their job as per the instructions of the manas and when this hierarchy work works properly then every action that we do becomes right action and how do we practice this yogena avyavicharanya krishna says yogena avyavicharanya avyavicharanya unwavering unswerving unswerving yoga he says now the only way to persist with any action that we have that we start it is very easy to start an action but very difficult to complete it but how do we persist here only way we can do is when we decouple the emotion from the action every time when we start an action there could be emotions that come which could take us away from doing the action you know many times it happens to us i resolve to do something i start and then because of various emotions i almost stop doing the action only when we understand that irrespective of the emotion we need to take control of the action and continue to do the action and emotion will come and go because emotions don't belong to us our emotions are not our emotions they are triggered from outside and when we persist in doing any action irrespective of the emotions we will see that the emotion will die its natural death will come and go will pass by and we will continue performing the action and when can this happen easily yogena avyavicharanya he says mamchayo 
ಅಭ್ಯಭಿಚಾರಣ್ಯೇನ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಯೋಗೇನ ಸೇವತೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸೇಸ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ವೇ ಐ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸೆಂಡ್ ಮೈ ಇಮೋಷನ್ ಇಸ್ ವೆನ್ ಐ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಫಾರ್ಮ್ I have to first transform my emotion to even transcend it. How do I transform my emotion? By directing the emotion towards Krishna. And that is why with bhakti, it becomes so very easy for us to handle our emotions and not let emotions come in the way of us performing the action. And when we are devoted to Krishna and do our actions as an offering to him, then we we subordinate our emotions to a higher purpose we subordinate our emotions to him and emotions no longer come in the way of our persisting with the action yogena avyavicharanya the emotion once it is subordinated to an action then one can easily continue to persist with the action now when we look at the persistence when we look at determination we also need to be very clear is this really determination or is it stubbornness this is where krishna classifies driti because most of the time we all think we are very determined our determination is actually our stubbornness how do we differentiate between determination and stubbornness by looking at the purpose of our action by looking at the possible consequences of the action by looking at purity of the action now if the purpose of the action is to serve is to contribute and in that process if we face challenges and against all odds we persist and we pursue the action that is determination on the other hand if the purpose of the action is selfish if the purpose of the action is to control and not contribute and we persist against all odds that is only stubbornness that is not determination if the action is unethical and we pursue that action with steadfastness like what duryodhana did now duryodhana persisted in trying to control the kingdom trying to hold on to the kingdom that is stubbornness not determination also determination also will can be differentiated by stubbornness by looking at the possible outcomes of any action look if we are constantly hitting against the wall and we are only breaking our head and not the wall then it is only stubbornness and not determination that is the reason why krishna takes up dhriti and says determination is key but it is also important to understand that determination is different from stubbornness and different from foolishness and therefore he takes up satvika driti rajasika driti and tamasika driti we have understood the nature of satvika driti and some of the techniques to cultivate satvika driti we will continue on the topic of driti to understand rajasik and tamasik driti in the coming session until then let us contemplate on the importance of purifying an action which with the with the help of driti can be performed as a yagna uh, getting the hierarchy of intelligence manas and the senses right and in the process of performing that action any action which is sakama becomes nishkama any action that is selfish can become selfless and it is in this process that satvika driti helps us to perform right actions so sarvam sri krishna please